Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today, we're gonna cover how to use PaintShop Pro to help you do some furniture layout in your house. Now there's definitely a lot of other programs that are probably much better at doing this kind of a thing. Um, for me personally, when I am trying to do a furniture, you know, design and layout, figure out kind of a, you know, situation, I'll use Blender, and primarily because I think Blender is a little bit more accommodating for doing specific sizes, and not only that, being able to render in 3D, and then even on top of that, if you wanted to get a pseudo-realistic view of what all of it's gonna look like from a three-dimensional view, it can do that. But in this case, if you're not wanting to learn a new piece of software, but you wanted something that can help you plan, you can do this in PaintShop Pro. So we're gonna look at just some, you know, strategies and some tricks on how we can do that with using very specific dimensions and then having the benefits of being able to drag around and rotate and reconfigure to see what's gonna work. So let's get to it. So step one in this whole process is you're gonna wanna measure everything. You'll wanna measure the room. You'll wanna measure all of your furniture and all of the things that you want to actually model in your layout. Um, Obviously, try to keep the units consistent, so either measure everything in centimeters or meters or feet or inches, whichever is your preference, um, and then just have all of that written down. So to start off, I'm going to create a new blank document, and uh, what I would recommend is um, there's two approaches to this. You can either just make the document as big as you would like it to be, or you can make the document fit the dimensions of the room that you're going to work in. So like in my case, I'm going to do the latter and I'm using inches. So I'm gonna change this image to be 180 by 180. So it's like a 15 by 15 foot room. So now right off you might say, well, this is gonna be a tiny image. Um, and that's true. Um, but since we're going to be drawing everything with vector graphics, at the end of it all, if we really, really need to, we can um, expand uh, the image. We can resize it so that it's a little bit more reasonable size. Really, the only side effect is just that we'll have a little bit more pixelation if we have any non-straight edge shapes. So then the first thing we'll do is let's, you know, a lot of furniture uh, tends to be square or rectangular, so we can use the rectangle tool and you can, you know, kind of decide, you know, what what color or what, uh, you know, what what shade do you want your furniture to be represented as? And like I said, in this case, since I'm using a pretty small image to begin with, I'm going to have a very small width for my um, line of my rectangle. So if we were to draw a rectangle, you know, not really paying too much attention to um, exactly what dimensions it is. What we'll see is, you know, I drew it, I can't change, um, you know, its, its dimensions. I can't set them exactly, which is what I want to do. However, after having drawn it, if I were to take the pick tool and select this guy and then go back to the rectangle tool with it selected, now I can actually change it. So if instead of a 76 by 36, you know, inch table, I wanted it to be 80 by 40, I can type those in. And now I have a very specifically set size table. One key element of every room, um, at least ones that I'm used to, has a door. And uh, the door itself um, isn't, isn't really the important part to model. It's the swing region that it has that you really need to account for so that when you're doing your furniture layout that you're not going to actually create a door that, um, or you're not gonna create something in a space where the door is going to swing into it. But representing that um, is typically going to be the shape of a semicircle. So um, if you have a semicircle shape already, uh, then that's probably the preferred uh, method of being able to draw one of these things. Like in my case, if I were to look in my menu here, I've got a lot of different shapes, uh, but I don't have a semicircle. So how are we going to do that? So what we can do is we can start with a circle and again, um, just drawing, you know, some, some arbitrary shape, choosing the pick tool, coming back to it, and then we can change the radius. Um, in this case, I'll just choose like 36. 
setting both just to make sure it's actually a circle. And then what we can do is, uh, as is typical with vector graphics, is we can convert to path so that we can manipulate the nodes. And so now that we're at this stage, we want to change to the pen tool. And then we want to change because we want these nodes to have like a right angle so that we can create our semicircle from this. We need that node type to be cus because that allows us to independently change the angle of those handles, which is what we want to do. And we'll want to do it also for this one. So having changed both of these nodes to cusp type, what I can do is hold shift. And then what that does is it forces my positions to be nice 45 degree angles. So I can just bring it up to the 90 and it snaps in place. Again, holding shift, grab this handle, bring it up and also a perfect 90. And now I can grab this last node, which is not cusp, it's still the original type and I can hold shift and drag it up and you'll see that it also snaps right into place. And then what we end up with is this nice perfect semicircle that we can now position in our room wherever the door is. And then you can see the entire swing region of that door. Now that's essentially the basics. I mean, at this point, you can, you know, move if this were a table or a desk, you can move it wherever you wanted it to be. You can rotate it if you're trying to see if it'll fit in a particular location. One thing I'll mention about rotation is that if you hold shift yet again, it it will do it will lock into these very specific angles so that you know if you want a perfect 90 degree rotation you can hold shift and then you'll get there so now let's talk about making slightly more complex shapes um, let's say for example we want to create a desk that um, is more like a corner desk so um, just to prevent any conflict with any existing vector objects i'm going to create a new vector layer and in this case, there's there's a few ways you can do this. One way is using the pen tool. So what we can do in this case, and what I would recommend, is if you have very specific dimensions written down on your corner desk, um, is to start in this upper corner here and then use the straight line drawing method. So if I were to put my first point down with my drawing tool, then again, holding shift, I can click again, and you'll see shift forces this line, just like so many others, to be a specific distance, or I mean a specific angle. So then now what I can do is I can draw this and drag this dot, and let's say I know that the first side of my table is, um, you know, I don't know, 80 inches. So then what I can do is drag this until the x, y coordinates in the bottom right of my uh, info menu bar says x equals 80, and then I can let go. And then that's gonna draw a nice line that's 80, in my case, inches long. So then let's say it continues down, and let's say it's 80 inches down. So again, I can click to add a point and then hold shift so that it snaps and makes a perfect right ankle. And then I can drag down until the y says 80. And then I've got my next line. So then now coming back in this way, let's say, you know, the depth of my table is only 30. Now, since I'm my only reference at this point to draw this is coordinates, you have to kind of do a little bit of mental math. So I'm starting at 80. And if I want to end up 30 less, then I need my x to say 50. So then that gets me that next portion. So then I can come back down here. And then again, I'm trying to you know, make it so that the, the depth of the, you know, other part of the L is 30, then what I need to do is return to the point where Y value is 30. And then continuing on with that same method to get back to the very beginning here. And then once I've kind of enclosed my shape, but maybe not that last bar, I can just say, I can right click on it and say, 
close. And then you'll see that it will close that shape and then I can hit apply. And now I have my corner table that I can manipulate and rotate just like all the other, all the other objects in the quote unquote room. And you can get much more sophisticated with this, you know, if the shape has a lot more pieces to it or whatnot. And then, you know, you just keep cruising along, making more shapes. Maybe I make a square and I know the dimensions. I'm going to do this loosely, but let's say that's my chair. And then I can use my shift and rotate. And then I can get a sense of like where that chair is going to live. Um, and, and so then now you are in the place where you have the freedom to rearrange. So how about more sophisticated shapes or actually another method of being able to create more sophisticated shapes like these? Like, let's say, you know, we're, we're drawing like a classic toilet. This, this is a situation where it might be easier instead of using the pen tool to just combine known shapes. Like if I combine like a rectangle and a ellipse, then, you know, assuming I use all those, maybe not a circle, but in actual ellipse, using all of those techniques that I mentioned above or earlier, what we can do is if we have to combine shapes to make a new shape is you can click, click one shape, shift and click the other shape, and then say group, or you can right click and then select group which would be here. And then in this case, since I already have a group, I can ungroup by clicking ungroup. So once again, click here, click here, and then say group. Or like you saw earlier, you can do group in the menu up here. And now this, these two objects can be treated as one that you can once again rotate and position as desired. So that's it. As you can see, um, shift is actually probably the most important key in this whole process. Um, if you know, want to get more creative, you can even color in these things or give your objects more detail, or you can even add labels to them um, to help you identify if you just happen to have a lot of furniture that's all rectangular shaped and you can easily forget what they are. Um, but another thing to remember too is, is um, apart from you know, the actual shape of something, consider its movement, you know, where, like, do you need regions of space? Because, for example, a chair needs to be able to slide out. Or if you have furniture that can transform its shape, like a recliner or something, just be, you know, aware of those spaces that are needed and think about your use cases, um, you know, of, of, of how you would navigate your space to get to all these things. But that's it for me. I hope this was a helpful um, tutorial on how you can use vector graphics in PaintShop Pro to help you do um, some layout stuff. As always, if you have any questions or would like to uh, suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like updates on new content, uh, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page that's listed on the TV, and I'll see you guys next time.